All right. Well, as the kiddos uh, made their way out, um, sadly, uh, Dave could not be with us tonight. He's not feeling well. Uh, he has the stomach bug. And so please pray for him and his family. Uh, as many of you have had that little stomach bug, um, it uh, is not too little or too kind. So please uh, pray for the Keene family and anybody else that may have it right now um, or who has had it. Uh, and so let's pray that this uh, little bug gets, gets on through uh, and out the door. So, um, but let me open us up in prayer and then we're going to dive into Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Let me pray for us. Father, we love you. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for allowing us to approach your throne boldly because of what you have done. Lord, it is uh, a humbling, uh, glorious thing uh, that you have shared with us yourself, your life for ours. And Lord, I pray that as we uh, celebrate you, uh, Lord, that we would be a people uh, that remember this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So uh, this evening, uh, I am sharing with you uh, a passage that I needed today uh, to encourage me. Um, with the weather uh, that has uh, eliminated our outreach event last Saturday... Uh, to rain that may be coming in today, I was discouraged. You put all this time and effort and uh, thinking you were going in the right direction, and then rain and wind eliminate all of those efforts. So what do we as fallen human beings, how do we respond to this? Well, sadly, today, I responded with frustration, not quite understanding why we would have to do this two weeks in a row. God has set the path before us, uh, but he guides all of our steps. And so... Um, as we think through that uh, and think of simple frustrations in life, and a lot of times those can be things of us pursuing the Lord, us doing what we believe is good and faithful and right and for His namesake. But He has other plans. And so as we dive in here, let's start in chapter 10, uh, and we're going to be in uh, verse 19, and we're going to read on down to verses 25. And the Word of God says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh and since we have a great priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. And so as I share with you guys my frustration, right? Well, what is 
my frustration. Well, my frustration is sin in my heart, not believing that God's way is the best way. That rain coming is not good and right. So it says, starting in verse 19, it says, therefore. So we always look back when we see therefore, and we see that it speaks in the beginning of this chapter of the sacrifice of Christ once for all. That his plan is and always will be and always has been good and right and just. His disciples argued with him that he should not suffer these things. Don't go to the cross. Because like today, they were blinded by their own sin and discerning discerning what is good and right. And so as we think of what Christ has done in his death, burial, and resurrection from the grave, what is we are going to proclaim this service and throughout Easter is his death, burial, and resurrection from the grave, which is good and right and just to the saved and the unsaved. So let's dive in. It says, therefore, brothers. So we don't know exactly who the author of Hebrews is, but we know that he is a believer in Christ and God has inspired him to write this and he is framing this to a Jewish people, but he calls us brothers. Therefore, brothers. So if we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, we have called upon his name, we have turned away from our sins and turned to Christ, we have received the Holy Spirit that has sealed us, and we press on in faith in Christ Jesus, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. So he says... Therefore, brothers. Therefore, brothers and sisters. Since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. So it is us who have been granted this access as his children into this holy place, okay? And the author here is writing to a Jewish people who would have understood the tabernacle and and the temple. And so what they are speaking of is the holy place where God dwelled, where his presence rested. Well, we, as we've prayed tonight, as we've sang songs to him tonight, we can approach that place, this holy place, through Jesus, our mediator, the one who stands in our place, because it's not me who goes in holy, it is Jesus who goes in holy. And it's what he has done. It is not my plans. It is not your plans. It is not your calling. It is God and God alone. And so as we enter in, how do we enter? We enter with Confidence. Confidence in who Christ is. Not in our walk with him, not in our daily devotion, not in our prayer life, but confidence in who Jesus Christ is and what he has done. Enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. So the blood that was spilt for us, his body that was broken for us, that curtain that was torn from top to bottom to grant us access 
into the holy of holies because of what Christ has done. Not by anything of me. Can you see why I needed this today? Because I disagree with the way that the weather is happening. Who controls the wind and the waves and the rain and the sea? I don't like your plan, God. So he had to refocus me back here to say, no, I am the one that sets you forth. I am the one who directs your steps. Not you. Him. Because of what he's done. And we keep on going and it says, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, so we have a great high priest. It's not me being that great high priest. It is Christ, our mediator, the one who intercedes for us, is our great high priest, the one who can break through and enter the holy of holies because he is holy. He is good. He is right. He is perfect. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. He is all in all. It is because of Him as our priest that we can enter into these places. So then, as we see what Christ has done, now it says, let us. So the author is directing his attention to us now. So this is what Christ has done. So have any of you heard anything that I brought to the table? I didn't bring anything. Guess what? You didn't either. But Christ brought it all. But he includes us in, and he says, let us. So listen to him. It says, let us. Draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw near. Let us draw near because of what Christ has done with your evil conscience draw near grant with your sin today draw near praise be to God that he allowed me to draw near he didn't say golly you stiff necked people that's it here you are you're in my hand bah, get out of here right praise be to God because that's what we deserve. But instead, he says, let us draw near by what he has done with my evil conscience and my body. Think about that. But wait a minute, what, what did he leave out? Did he leave out my, my anger, my lack of self-control? Did he leave any of that out? No, he didn't. He said your evil conscience and your whole body has been sprinkled with the blood and washed with pure water because your mind we can draw near to him because he drew near to us. And praise be to God that us, in the midst of our sin, we have a Savior 
who we are celebrating today, but this week especially, that left heaven and drew near to us, putting on flesh and lived a perfect and sinless life and died in our place and was buried and raised from the grave so that we could draw near with our evil conscience and our bodies, our broken flesh that continues to wither away. And then he continues on. He says, let us, right? Amen. God's had his part. Now he's saying, hey, brothers, sisters, come be partakers. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Right? Look at this. Holding fast without wavering. Being tossed to and fro by the waves of the sea. Trial come. Weather come. What am I holding fast to? What are you holding fast to? When the good that we try to do seems so fleeting, hold fast to Christ. Hold fast with an unwavering hope. With an unwavering hope. Not in me. Not in my walk. But in Christ. The confession of His death, burial, and resurrection. That He is the Christ the Messiah, the Son of God, who came to take away the sins of the world. That unwavering confession. And then, once we're holding on faithfully to that, he tells us again, this is our third let us. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Let us consider. Think about that. That's what consider means. Right? Think about it. Mull upon how to stir one another up for love and good works. Okay? Here's a little conviction for you. Look around the room. How many people have you thought of in this room who are your family? I'm saying just thought of, just popped in your head, came to your mind one time. And then, let's think about if we mold upon, let us consider how to stir one another up. I sure didn't. After three o'clock, that was about it. I was shot. Right? It was like, okay, I'm not thinking of anybody else. How am I going to get by? But he says, if we're holding fast, we will think of others and we will think of the good of one another. And so look at this next verse. It says, let us not neglect meeting together. Though it's the habit of some. Well, guess what? We met tonight, 
And this gives you an opportunity to think about one another and how we can stir one another up. If we don't meet together, guess what? We think of each other less and less and less, right? How many of us in here have said, out of sight, out of mind, I just can't, if it's not right in front of me, good gracious, I can't even think of nobody else, right? Oh, I forgot to do X, Y, and Z, right? Out of sight, out of mind. It's simple, but praise be to God. He tells us, hey, don't neglect to meet together so that you can stir one another up. Consider how to stir one another up. And think about that. Is a stir, think about, is a stir really hard? Okay, I'm like, I, I love, I'll, I'll do spaghetti. This is one of the only few things, and if e even really cooking spaghetti is really cooking, I don't know. I, don't, I claim it to be cooking because it's the most thing that I do. But think about that. Every two minutes, I'll go back, and I'll hit a little stir because I don't want my noodle to get stuck to the bottom. But how much, think about that, though, but how much effort, is put into a little stir. But how much better does it make the noodles when we pay attention to them and we stir them up every two minutes while they're boiling for 10 minutes, right? Think about that. If you just ignore it, you dump the, the noodles in there and they stick all to the bottom and you don't stir them up until you're trying to drain it out into this uh, little sifter thing. I don't even know what it's called, right? It's all stuck to the bottom. But how much effort is a little bit of stirring? Think about it. I'm telling you how silly it is because we don't do it when God commands that we do it. Because we become frazzled like I was and we disagree with his plan, and we get so self-consumed about ourselves, I can't think about none of you. Unless God is stirring me up. Do you know what helped me break free? Meeting with a couple of the saints that were pursuing God, that love righteousness, that helps me to think of this verse, to go in, to say, God, man, I can't believe I actually thought my plan was better than his. But a little stirring. Because we weren't neglecting to meet together. Because we need each other. God has given us as good gifts to one another. And he loves you deeply. And he loves you so much that he continues to stir you up by his spirit. Think of what the spirit is. The comforter. The helper. Praise be to God that the Spirit stirs us to desire to stir one another. And then it says, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So, did I ever stop stirring my noodles? No. Not until they were done. And so, 
as we are encouraging one another to continue to run the race of faithfulness. Understand the blessing it is to have the great privilege to have another day to stir one another up as the day draws near. What a blessed, faithful hope that Christ has given us. So let us, let us hold fast. Let us draw near. Let us stir one another up because of what Christ has done. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that you have done it all. That it is finished. And Father, we praise you. For as the day draw nears, that you allow us to draw near to you, to hold fast to the confession, to stir up one another for love and good works. Lord, we praise you. You are so faithful. You are so kind. And we love you so much. Thank you for being a holy and righteous and faithful God. We love you, Lord. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.